After working hard at the gym, you need a mattress that works as hard as you do. Spinaline has engineered the perfect mattress for you and your active lifestyle. Don't compromise your recovery with inferior sleep. Order your Spinaline mattress today. After working hard at the gym, you need a mattress that works as hard as you do. Spinaline has engineered the perfect mattress for you and your active lifestyle. Don't compromise your recovery with inferior sleep. Order your Spinaline mattress today. Rush Vapes, the world's first pre-workout vape. I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work and are backed by science. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body, and that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. We use only top-of-the-line formulations dosed for maximum results and the best flavoring systems available. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Uh, you're fine. <laughs> Welcome back to Iron Rage. I'm Dave Palumbo here with Lee Priest with his new uh, flat top haircut. What's all that all well, about, man? Well, it's almost a flat top, Dave. You know, when you go in, why is I hate this fucking thing we're on? Every time I look at it, I look like I'm crooked or something. Or I'm going the opposite way. Yeah, that, that's called old age. You start, you, Tyler, your spine Tyler, starts Tyler bending. Tyler needs to hurry and come back out of quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> now, because oh, I'm looking this way, that way, that way. Yeah, yeah I, I went to the barbers. I thought, you know what? I'll try something different again. I'll go back to the old 1998 style flat top. So I like it. You go in there, you have a photo. Even I, I even took a photo. I'm like, look, I want like this. And this is how you know when you're in trouble. When the barber has this little bit of smell of alcohol on him. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he looks a bit like this. Oh, shit. So he's, if he's partly cross-eyed and smells of alcohol, I'm like, oh, this is, ain't going to turn out good. So he, he starts he starts cutting, and I'm like, no, no, you got to do a bit more here. He's like, oh, I'm glad you teach me. I'm like, you're the oh, fucking barber. And then he's doing this and that. So we finally get to something. Gonna, and my wife said, why didn't you stop him? I said, no, because at this point, I know what I've told him what I want, and I've showed him. I want to see how he's interpreted it. So right, I want right. to see what – I've said I want a flat top. Here's the photo. I want it like this. Now I want to see what I've told him. I right. want to see what he heard right. in his head. So I'm just watching what he's doing and I'm just like oh. – Maybe I you're really care. not crooked. Maybe it's your hair that's crooked. Maybe. That's, that's the problem. But I think, you know what, it's hair. It grows back. In, in two weeks right. I'll go see my normal yeah. guy and he'll he'll straighten it all up for me. But it didn't turn out too bad. No, it looks good. Uh, you know, it's funny because you have such a good head of hair at such a, uh, you know, an advanced age. Uh, I'm kind of a little jealous, to be honest with you. But <laughs> <laughs> well, the way this guy was going, I was losing it pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Stephen, a fucking, you know, like, uh. so when funny. it was done, when I was done, he's like, "You happy?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's a good job, mate. Thank you." Someone's yeah. like, "Did you pay?" I said, "Look, okay. of course I had to pay him. You can't." Embarrass what do they charge me. for a haircut in Australia these days? 
Uh, the place I go to only charge me twenty, but normally it's thirty, thirty-five. But oh, really? 20. That much? Wow! Yeah, normally. Yeah, but yeah, but in some places too, it's always like a tattoo party. You can go. I've been to one barber, and one guy will cut it one day. He'll do the same thing. He'll say twenty bucks. I'm like, here you go. I can go to the same barber if he's not there. I see another barber there. Right. Thirty bucks. I'm like, <laughs> well, ten dollars oh, more. They make their own prices. These guys. I think so. I think they're just like a tattoo parlor. Uh, how much is that? Uh, <laughs> and do you have to tip them? Do you, oh, you don't tip no. in Australia. That's why. No. So no. I, I'll get a fifteen dollar haircut, but I'll give them. Ten, I'll give them twenty five bucks. So. You know, it comes out to almost the same thing. Oh, anyway. well, look, well, look at your hair now. I got more hair on my balls. Well, yeah, I know, but I have to. When you have no hair and you have to, you have to make it look good. That's I think way harder than when you have a lot of hair. You can't yeah. really go wrong with your hair. You know, I can I can do your hair for let's say six ninety nine. I just go to the <laughs> auto shop and get some fucking spray paint. <laughs> I, I prefer that actually. I'll just tape. I'll tape your face off with t- yeah, masking you, tape yeah. and paper. <laughs> six ninety nine out the door, Dave. <laughs> There you I'll go. Even, I'll even cut holes in the paper so I can do your eyebrows. I, I appreciate it. That would be nice to match the hair. There you go. <laughs> I've got a new job. I'm a hairdresser. That's right. That's right. You know, in, in prison, they got these, uh, the, the prison hair cutter guys. The buzz. Uh, the buzz is that it? Yeah, yeah. everything's a buzz in there. And th- it's funny because there's like all the buzzer guys do all the, the guys, with the, you know, the black guys who have uh-huh. like, you know, like the shaves and all the different things. And then you got like one white guy cutting hair who does all like the white guys in, in, in prison. <laughs> it's just the one. It's just the one. <laughs> who actually has a si- he actually is allowed to have a scissor, you know. This I was going to say, I thought the, the white guys is just a simple number two. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He act- they actually give him a scissor. You know, for, yeah. for the white people here, all, all the black people get the nice designs. Yeah, they shit. got great. <laughs> fucking, they look like their haircuts look better than they are when they're when they're out of jail. You know, no, no wonder they keep going back for the haircuts. Exactly. Well, you know what it is when you're in jail. There's not much you can do, so that everyone like perfects their craft. <laughs> These guys, they got the microwave cookers. You know, they get the kids who oh, can yeah. cook. They can cook a gourmet meal in the microwave oven. It's unbelievable. They saute. They, I mean, it, it's. You can't get near the on Saturdays. You can't get near the well, microwave. Well, maybe. Guys are cooking. Well, maybe that that's a good case. I, I I want to put that down as a case for more women should go to prison and to learn to fucking cook. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and then you have the guys who cut hair. And then you have the lawn guys. Then you have the guys who fix things. They, oh yeah. I, I can't even believe it. laundry. What about laundry when they got to do the laundry and fold? No, them? laundry you got to do your own. Oh yeah, they do have the laundromat guys though too. You're right. They do all the uniforms and stuff what like that. What about the guy in the shower that soaps you up? Ah, <laughs> his name is Stevie B. Oh, <laughs> he's a he's a special guy. He he's travels a very around. special guy. He yeah, travels around. But have you ever speaking of cooking and women not being able to cook? This is what amazes me when I watch these TV shows on. You know, you get those homes in Beverly Hills and this and that. Right. And every time they walk into the house. Generally, the guy, he's like, isn't this a beautiful house? And she's like, oh, no, we need to change that. Always the woman bitching. <laughs> oh, we need to do a renovation on them cupboards and this and that. Then as soon as they walk into the kitchen, oh, the kitchen's too small. I go into one kitchen. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at the cooktops. Look at the bench. Look at the bench in the middle. I'm thinking, shut up, bitch. You're never going to fucking use it. Just, <laughs> just look, at, look at the fucking microwave. That's as far right. as you're going to get. The fucking microwave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, you know, I love that. You watch the Kardashians. They got like these like $30 million oh, houses. You know they it? never use the kitchen unless yeah. they have a chef maybe who comes in. Uh, and, and have you seen the fridge is perfectly packed with all their promotion oh, yeah, the stuff? Diet, yeah, and all the Diet Cokes and all the other stuff oh, that they drink. Oh, yeah. oh, have you got this fridge in America now? Because remember the fridges came out, what was it? Oh, a couple of years ago, I had the touch screen on the fridge, so you can have an iPad. I, I wanted, I wanted one. My wife wouldn't let me get one. She's like, "It's what are you going to use it for?" Thank God, she's someone's got sense in the family. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna look cool. But I'm like, what, what are you going to do? Look at the Facebook or in the kitchen. Yeah, but then, yeah. But then it's got that fridge too. When you put stuff in it, oh. and, not, and notifies you on your phone, you're getting low on milk, or you get. I was like. What have people become that lazy? We can't, but now oh, absolutely, with that you lazy. can't open the fucking door and look in there. <laughs> but we, I just saw this ad on TV now. We've got this new fridge here, you touch it, and the door becomes transparent so you can see into the fridge. I love well, it. That's the one I wanted. That's exactly the one I wanted. Why, why? Because it's too hard to open the door between you and no, your... it's just cool. Eh, 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 why do you have an it? iPhone? Huh? Why do you have an iPhone? Because it's they stopped cool. making the other ones, it's not cool. I'd rather go back to a phone. This is what everyone should do. You want a BlackBerry? No, just, yeah, BlackBerry, just where you can text and call and <laughs> check your emails. Everybody else, go back to computers. Because imagine how good the world would be if people are out walking around smiling and talking to everyone rather than, oh, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook. We're not allowed to anymore. That's the problem. 
Uh, what, what you can have it on your computer. That's the only time you can check it on your computer. On your phone, just relax. Yeah. yeah, but how hard is it, Dave, to undo your fridge door now and look in there? You just got to touch it and see what's in there. I know, I know. Oh, Hold my on. God. Let me see if I can find this thing. I got a, got a good one for you. You'll like this one. Hold on. What's the world coming to? Uh, let's see if I can get this thing. Pull this thing up. Hold on. Watch this. He has that refrigerator. I think, you, I think this is the refrigerator you were talking about. Let's see. Probably if you just touch the door and it becomes transparent. It's the LG yeah. signature. This guy looks like he's never used a fridge in his yeah. fucking life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They always get these weird was guys. That, that was that like, a cat? Was that a cat on the floor then or what? I don't know. They always have these weird people that like uh, sell these uh, appliances. You ever noticed that? I've never met a normal appliance no. salesperson. Like the like the vacuum salesman that comes to the yeah. door and rapes your wife yeah. and kills her. Oh, that's not nice. No, oh, well, you know, I've seen the movies. There it is. You can see it. Yeah, it goes, it, it dims. Yeah. And it, I yeah. think it uses the same technology as like, you know, like cars have. Here it goes. Have Here, it goes. It. Here it goes. Oh, he's going to touch it. Oh, nice. Oh, look at that. I don't need to undo the door now. Oh, I can look inside. I think the technology is similar to what, you know, how like when you look in your rear view mirror now, it'll yeah. dim itself if you get hit with like a, someone blast you with the brights yeah. behind you. What about what about those um, places, those fancy clubs that have the toilets when you go in and the glass goes frosted? Oh, there you go. That's even cooler. But actually, there's a woman suing one of them because she was actually in there doing her business and it unfrosted and everyone's standing outside. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Look at this. The refrigerator opens by itself, too. Oh, it no. Oh, it's got a foot pedal to undo yeah. the door. Oh, what, no, what it's not the... even a foot. No, it's not a foot pedal. It's just it automatically sees what your uh, you, your foot just has to pass by it and, it, and then it's fine. Well, I, I got six cats. My fucking fridge will be opening and closing all yeah, day absolutely. long. Absolutely. And they can go uh, get the milk uh, and whatever they uh, want, uh, all their uh, little treats in there or whatever. Uh, what's it coming to? Hold on. The fridge door is too heavy to open. Let me just put my foot down. <laughs> Honey, can, well, you know you come, what? can you come get the milk out? The lead is full. It's too right. heavy for me to... My um, my Mercedes I had before I, uh, I, I had kids... You used to be able to just kick your foot underneath the uh, the fender, just run, run your foot, and the, the trunk would open, which is kind of oh, cool yeah. if you have packages. I've in seen hand, those ones, those sensors. Yeah. yeah, but that's another thing too that annoys me. Look, I, I understand technology, but all these cars with lane guidance and shit, whatever happened to fucking driving the car yourself? <laughs> I'm too lazy <laughs> now. I don't want well, to stay in my leap. lane. Pretty no, soon, there's not going to be any more driving. You're going to have. Uh, uh, you're going to get see, in a car. See, all my life, I can honestly say, I've had how many? Too many cars. Yeah. But never once have I used cruise control. Never. <laughs> no, nah, I don't do that. Even when I, I drive from them. like tr California to Texas, I prefer to feel my foot on the accelerator. Well, you fall asleep when you put it in cruise control. You don't have to do yeah. anything. You know? That's the thing. But now they've got these new cars. I saw one. What model was it the other day? When you turned the indicator on, Mm -hmm. Could have been that Kia K900 or something. You turn the indicator on, and you know where your gauges are on the dash. Yeah, it comes on there a screen so you can see what's beside you. Because I like that. I like. Because heaven forbid, Dave, you got to. Oh my neck! Right, my right. neck! I can't. I, turn my I head. do like the lane. I like when it tells you there's someone in the in the blind spot. Don't uh, you like that spot. one? Uh, yeah, I still look. It's like you got to look. You can't. Well, you should look anyway. But I'm just saying. At least, but sometimes you want to just. You think there's no one in the lane. You're about to turn over, you cross over, and then all of a sudden it'll beep, 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 beep. Well, the only some other thing is I don't like is sometimes I've had different cars. You know, like the A-frame pillars or whatever that come down. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they're so thick when you go look, no one's there, and it's just blocking a car. Oh then, yeah, ah! you, that's why I like that thing there because it kind of it's like a. I also like the one now where if you're getting too close to someone in front of you, like you're not. You're not looking at the yeah. If you're not looking straight ahead, you can get too close on someone. It'll it'll like it'll hit you with such a loud siren that you you'll you'll all jump you out heart, of the car. You have a heart attack and die, yeah. so you crash. Yeah, you crash <laughs> anyway. Exactly. But what gives me is like I said, just the whole. Then remember that video of that one guy in the Tesla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As it's driving down the road. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was a good, no, no, good commercial. No, no, no. All right, so this is where I wanted. This is the rant today. Um, I know that you're you've you've mentioned this before, but there's a a gym owner now in New York state who is suing him as part of a coalition. He's suing mm -hmm. governor Cuomo in New York state. Uh, his name is Charles De Francesco, and he's suing because he wants them to open up his gym, allow him mm -hmm. to open the gym up. It's a whole coalition of people, uh, gym owners. What do you think about this? You know, his, his argument is, Hey, look, liquor stores are open. Those mm -hmm. are considered essential, but, but the one, the one institution, the one business that actually people get healthier at 
working out and the gym is not open. Uh, is, well, does that piss you off? We've mentioned before the so-called go- – oh, there's the eggs already again. The so-called um, government doesn't want people healthy. We've discussed this because yeah. it's much easier to get rid of sick people. And the thing is, it's like here in Australia, the same thing happened here. Gyms were almost the last thing to reopen. We had bars open, restaurants open. Yeah. Uh, okay, supermarkets are essential, but how many people go through a, even a shopping mall? How many people go through a mall each day and shopping centres touching everything? Whereas I know here at the gyms, we have a marshal, like what do they call them, a COVID marshal that wears their bright orange vest around. Oh, my walk, God, really? And I, yeah, and as you walk in the gym, everywhere they've got, they got wipes, but as you walk in the gym, there's a huge table and there's probably 50 spray bottles with a whole pack of, like, wipes so everyone can take a spray bottle with them and go around so when you finish, spray the bench and that. And then someone just goes around to make sure you're not too close to people or you just make sure they clean up. But, you know, all gyms have to have that here now, and they're mm-hmm. open, so why not? Like I said, someone hops on a public transport bus. How many hop on a bus, sit there, uh, uh, pick their nose, wipe it on the seat? <laughs> you get on the bus next and someone's been farting on the seat, doing whatever. <laughs> Even those, like, overweight people or skinny people, I don't want to fat shame, but people sit on a bus, they sweat on the seat. Right. They, don't, they don't have someone on the bus wiping down the seat every time someone gets on and off. Sure. So if, if a gym... Like I said, you could have it where you could either set up a schedule, call up, what hours do you want to train? There's 50 people at these hours, and then you get an hour. At least if you get an hour, it's better than nothing. You could regulate it, but at least you've got somebody there going around cleaning. Sure. So I don't see how it could be a bad thing. I've always said that, like you said, bottle shops are open. Bar, here in Australia, bars were open. Clubs were open. Restaurants are open. But gyms, oh, no, you can't go to the gym because that might spread some disease. <laughs> Well, that, this guy is just like I just want to. I just want to run my business. I want to just be able to pay my bills. You're putting me out of business. You're putting us all these gym owners out of business. Mm-hmm. Think about it. New York State has not opened since the shutdown. You yeah. know that's a lot. That's a long time now to carry a business and have do, to pay rent. Do you, you don't even have restaurants open yet, or? Well, in, I'm in Florida, so Florida yeah, has every, everything's, everything's open in Florida. I think New York restaurants, I think I believe, are open because they consider them essential. But um, I, you know, the, you, there's limited the seating. The best thing ever for their argument is when they go to court, you just pull up videos of the protests, the thousands of people yeah, protesting yeah. shoulder to shoulder. Say, so you're coming to arrest me and close my business down. You want to arrest them? Yeah, and just letting them go havoc, just shoulder to shoulder, running yeah. around, painting shit on the roads, doing this, doing that, and you just do nothing. You just stand back and let them go. But yet, true. I, I open up a business where I can control people coming in and out and sanitize shit. And I'm I'm the fucking bad guy. It's true. But look, all they got to do is just get them to put on BLM shirts, Antifa shirts, whatever, and just as they start coming into the gym each day, just start yelling like they're fucking yeah, lunatics. right, like you're being discriminated yeah. against. Yeah. What 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 are you training today? <laughs> Fuck Trump! Fuck Trump! <laughs> <laughs> Just train like that every yeah. set. Yeah. yeah, Trump. Fuck Trump. Fuck Trump. Yeah, yeah. COVID. So you're right. You just say you're racially profiling me. That's yeah, it. Yeah. And, and, just, and, and just throw out fucking whatever the protesters yell out. Just fucking start throwing it out. Right. Right. As, you, as you're squatting heavy. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on in here? Oh, you know, they're just protesting. Let them go. And that's all you got to do. See, just go to the gym and act like it's a protest. I, I've, I fixed the problem for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, on another note, changing the gears a little bit, I saw that Vince Taylor posted on his Instagram. Vince? He still looks good, Vince, doesn't he? He looks great. He's for 60 years old. He looks great. But Vince posted on his Instagram a, um, a picture of him and Robbie Robinson on stage together. Ah. And he basically was thanking Robbie because he said when he was 14 years old, he wrote uh, his first letter ever to a bodybuilder, and it was to mm-hmm. Robbie Robinson. And Robbie answered him back and gave him some like motivating words of advice. He sent him a bicep because he wanted to see how to get big arms. Because I want to uh, have arms like Robbie Robinson. And uh, Robbie wrote him back to work out. What year was that picture there? That was that in the nineties, was it? Early nineties. Yeah, that that's got to be like when Vince was, was that the Masters the Olympic? Or was that the Masters? Oh, maybe Olympia? it was Masters Olympia. You're right. I think you're right. Still look good. Robbie still looks good now. For no, seven, yeah, right? Robbie still looks good right here. But even now, for what he's seventy-two, isn't he? Yeah, 70? I know, yeah, I know he's in his seventies. Can you believe it? <laughs> he would certainly, he would certainly beat any other seventy-year-old. That's for sure. 
if only we can get to 70, Dave. You ever notice yeah. when you're young? When I was in my 20s, I'm like, I'm going to die young. But then you're like, I don't care. You get to 30, <laughs> I'm going to die. I don't care. And now you get right. to late 40s 50s you're like i want to get to 55 i want to get to 60 right, it's almost right. like a challenge now to keep yeah. getting further yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah we, we changed our mind that's why when they always people say oh i i made a deal with the devil you know i got to give him my soul mm. in five years and he's like ah, well, five years is for, forever mm. you know but obviously we'll just we'll just, quickly. we'll just end up like the picture of dorian gray there you go Let's keep. We will have to hide yeah. our age. So, and, uh, so back back to your story. He wrote a letter and he gave him an arm oh. program. So yeah, and he he wanted to thank him. He was just giving him a thank you, you know, for after all these years for everything you did to you know kind of motivate him and uh, mm -hmm. as a young bodybuilder. So, but that was nice. I think that you know not, not a lot of people. You know, people like to pick on everything that's you know wrong with with society, and so people pick on Robbie because Robbie's you know he's always been a bit of a rebel. You know, no, like he says Robbie. what's on his mind. You yeah. know, he's an old, he's an older guy, you know, and old people complain a lot. I mean, I, I could just think of my dad. Leave the guy <laughs> alone. He he did a lot of good for the sport. You know what I mean? So what mm -hmm. if he, he's a little grumpy old man when he's a little older? Well, I know, he's a little well, I know, bitter. Well, I know he got bitter when Weeder used his bust and that right. without yeah. paying him and stuff. Of course, yeah. you're going to get bitter when someone's plastered, you know, your famous like this everywhere and puts Joe Weeder's head on mm -hmm. it. <laughs> stuff yeah, like that, yeah so. that's true. That's sure. like, yeah, and it, only, it's only natural you're going to get upset by it. But no, when I when I was with Black Skull, Robbie came to Brazil once or twice, and we mm. got on great. We got on great at the booth together, Robbie and I. And when I see him in Venice, we it. we always get on good. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I get along really well with him too. But some people have a problem. I don't know. I, you know, I, no, I don't look. I, I, I don't know how Robbie does business, but you know, people. You know, people want everything for nothing. Well, you know? I think and I, and I think it's like you said though. Robbie's just one of those people where someone can come up. I know I had a guy you know, i'm sure you get it too sometimes people say to me this guy got mad at me once because he was giving out these nice shakers you know there's like shaker you put your right. drink in it shake up it's this really pretty like gold one it had all this stuff on lee can i send you one i said sure you can send me one no problem thinking he'd send it to me mm -hmm. and i got it i got it i wrote back saying thank you very much it's a nice shake or he goes <laughs> oh can you do a video using it and take some photos with it and that? <laughs> then it gets mad we don't want to do it, right? I said, look, I said, look, I really appreciate you sending it to me and stuff, but now you want me to advertise it for you, knowing true right. well if I do that, you're going to sell it. So I get this $6 shake and then you're going to make money. I said, look, as much as I appreciate it, yeah. I, I can't do that for free. And I was like, well, mate, fucking hell, it's like all leave. Yeah. I'm just starting a new business out. Here's a T-shirt. Can you wear it for me and post it for me now? <laughs> I've had people that just send me shirts. Hey, they got a new shirt. Right. You, then you, it's up to you. If you want to yeah, do it, then that's, you that's do what it. They right. say, look, yeah, look, I don't expect anything if you whatever. And if, and if they do that approach, I'll generally have it on and wear it and take a photo oh, and I do whatever. I did the same thing. Yeah, I did Yeah, same. but as soon as they say, can you do this? And I always write back when I get <laughs> when they say, can you wear it for me? I say, look, I'm busy right now. But you know what? If you send one to Michael right. Jordan, he might he might do it for you. It's like, <laughs> go try someone like that. It's like, yeah. Which I understand if you're starting it, but still, come on, don't just. Well, I gave you a free T-shirt. It cost me five dollars. Come no, on. <laughs> Every, everyone wants something for nothing. You know that. But like I said, it's even like when I'm doing stuff. You know, if I'm online and someone's like, "Give me a shout out," just like I just ignore it. But if someone says "Hello, Lee," and I see their name, I'm like, "Hi, Mike. Right. Hi, this." But as soon as you ask, it's like, no. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, I don't blame you. Now, uh, Iris Kyle is uh, coming back officially. You know, she'll be doing oh, Miss that's Olympia. Ki don't, that's Kai. Don't try something. Don't, <laughs> don't, trick, don't, don't try trick me this hour of the morning. <laughs> I, I asked, I've been talking right. a, lot about, a lot about this on the TV shows. Do you think that um, they should um, keep women's physique and bodybuilding separately, or do you think they should yeah. combine it? I think they should combine it because women's physique to me is what. Almost like classic, if we go back, classics, what bodybuilding used to be yeah. a long time ago before they all got the big stomachs and that. And women's physique is pretty much how it used to be before they went into the really big type, mm -hmm. you know, bodybuilders. Because remember, when I was with Kathy back then, I've mentioned it before, when the women were getting too big, the judges actually said to them, you must lose 20% of your muscle. And a lot of the girls did. They conformed mm -hmm. to what the judges wanted. But come the day of the show, guess what? They gave it to the big girls. So they're like... You've asked us to lose this extra muscle so we look more feminine again, but now you're still rewarding the big people. So, you know, again, to me, it came to the judges. They're the ones that ruined women's bodybuilding and ruined the men's bodybuilding because right. they just didn't stick to the guidelines. Remember, even with the men, they said if your stomach sticks out, you're going to be deducted. No one got yeah. deducted. So I was no. like, oh. 
Yeah, but you know, they think, enforce it. What happens is they enforce it like one or two times, and then they just oh. they just forget about it. Or again. they or they enforce it on one person and not that person. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, like, he, he's barely stuck out a little bit, but yours was just a little bit more. Oh, okay, I didn't know there was a fucking we had the measure, but yeah, I think they should combine it because you know women's physique and women's body is borderline because, like I like I said, Dave the. Women's body physique is how body women's bodybuilding should be. Because who would, yeah. if you went back to what? If you went back to the earlier days, Anya Lang mm. and Tonya Knight, would they be right. physique or? They would easily be physique, I think. So yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they all would have been. It wasn't until like maybe Kim and them started getting like really big and bigger yeah. and Iris and that. But before then, I was around the physique range. So I think it would be good as long as, like I said, I, I give respect to any woman that gets up there and trains her ass off and stuff and then. Who are we? Because it's like men. If you're training, you want to get big, you want to get big. So I guess it's the same with the women when they see their body sure. growing. You know, you can't get to a point and go, well, I'm satisfied with that. I'm just going to mm-hmm. stop here. Of course, you yeah. want to get as good as you can. Sure, we know some probably go a little bit too far with not their training, but maybe the supplement side of things. So, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, when someone comes up behind me and goes, hello, Lee, and I think it's Bob, and I turn around <laughs> and I turn around and it's, you know, it's Sherry. You know, I just, oh, Jesus Christ, you know, it's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when you, so who, when so you who wins? Those, who you wins here? Yeah, Iris Kyle or Shinny Grant here? Yeah, how are we going to pull out? Well, back, well, back in the day, you know, you had separate toilets, but now there's these unisex toilets. Don't be surprised if a lady standing beside you urinating at the urinal. <laughs> uh, Kai does come back to you, Olivia, in the women's division. <laughs> uh, You're not she, discriminate against me. That, Would you support? Be, Male men crossing over into the women's division and vice versa. Just just make a new division. You can't. How many divisions can you have? Why can't the men compete oh, well, against the women? And why can't exactly. the women compete how, against how the men? Exactly. How many? How many can we have? Why fucking stop now? <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> You're well, gonna before, need, pretty soon it's going to be a week long. Every show is yeah. going to be a week long. There's not going to be any like. Yeah. You know, this will be. be no this will be the. What do you? What do you? Um. You yeah. know. What do you um associate as today division? Yeah, exactly. Or we'll just call it the confused division. Exactly. Now, I think, I don't know, her shape's really good, you know, when she stands there. She reminds me of, when she's standing front on and stuff, she reminds me of the old, you know, because Linda Murray used to see Landry. pictures of Linda Murray. You thought mm-hmm. she was massive, but in person, she was so small. No, she and, was a small girl, yeah. But on stage, just with her delts and the way mm. she, tiny waist, the yeah. illusion was like, and I think that Shanique's the same as that. You know, when you look at her just yeah. standing there, though. Everything flows so well, so, ugh, so who wins? To say. Yeah, look at it. Would, wouldn't you love to see him compete though against each other? I think it would be great. Me personally, as much as I like Iris and what she's done, I think I would go for Shanique's type body and the balance and stuff over mm. Iris. Yeah, well, we'll see. Maybe but we'll Iris, get can, Iris conditioning is always good. Though, so the show is Shanique's. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I think it would be a great battle between the two of them. I think people, the fans, would love to see it. Maybe the, maybe the listen, then, maybe the make like, one thing. Like we said, if you throw Kai in the mix, well. <laughs> <laughs> Kai is always in the mix. It could be the men's division, the women's division. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the thing about Kai. I'm surprised he hasn't just started teasing again now. Phil's coming back. I'm shocked. He... I think it would be a great uh, move on his part to come back and, and try to win that title, you know, uh, away from Brandon Curry while battling Phil Heath on stage. Come on, man. That would be classic, classic footage we'd get. But you know still... there would be a fight on stage. <laughs> Is there still any confirmation? There? Because you know how we've got the list out and it says yeah. Bonak and Rami and all these or whoever. Well, someone they... – yeah, are someone they, told they, me that, that Rami may be able to come here because Kuwait is not banned from flying, only the European countries. So Bonnick would be banned then, would he? Yep. Yeah, it would be hard for him to get here, I would think. Even or, now. Unless he came early, yeah, I don't know. Can he go to Kuwait for a couple of weeks and then come from <laughs> Kuwait? <laughs> That's a good question. <clears throat> can there, there's, always your, loop, there's always loopholes, Lee. You know that. Can he incubate in Kuwait and then come? <laughs> Or maybe he, Bader, maybe Bader could fly him on a private jet or something like that over fly here. Fly to you know? Mexico, train in Mexico. The there weather's nice. Get a suntan, and then when it's, you here. know a week before the Olympia, either <laughs> jump the wall or find the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. The there you go. There you go. <laughs> put Absolutely. a put a few put a few backpacks on your back. Right. Become a become a drug mule and just come across. <laughs> <laughs> get over get over in the states. Have an yeah. anchor baby, and ta-da, yeah. you do. Know. Yeah, and and on that very seedy note, no pun intended, of course, (laughs) we're going to wrap this thing up. I'm Dave Palumbo with Lee Priest. Let us know your opinion. Would you like to see Iris and and Shanique compete in that same division up on stage and call the winner Miss Olympia? Let us know in the comments below. 
I'm Dave Palumbo for Lee Priest. We'll see you next week.